Marbach is one of the oldest and largest stud farms in Germany, and they have been breeding horses here for over 500 years. Hello equestrians and adventure fans. My name is Alyssa and I am on a quest to ride every breed. In this episode, you're going to meet some wonderful horse breeds and learn about the history of a very special state stud farm. Let's get started. Marbach is located in a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. It is open to visitors year round and is a beautiful place to visit. Today, to help us with the quest, we are meeting up with a lifelong equestrian. She is also the president of the European State Studs Association and the director here at Marbach. Good morning. Good morning. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Welcome at Marbach State Stud. We are here now. And um, this is the old yard. The house is uh, from 1600. You needed good horses to be a good king or a good count, to have uh, transportation, to have military horses, to have uh, carriage horses, to have good farm horses because the economy and the agriculture had to go on and, and forestry too. So here the principal stud, the mares, um, groups, they, there they developed good stallions and the stallions were sent out in the countryside to promote the, the breeding progress. Sure. It's like technical progress uh, in, in former times. This is one of the important um, personalities in the history. He is uh, King William I. He was a, a king during and after the Napoleonic Wars in Europe. He went as a crown prince with Napoleon first, and there he got to know the Arabian horse. He was the one to begin with uh, breeding the Arabians at his own stud farm. After he died, his family took over the breed and they kept them until 1932. And in 1932, in the world crisis, they couldn't afford the horses anymore, so they brought the horses to Marbach. So since then we are in charge of these uh, wonderful uh, dam line, sire lines that are really old. But he imported them, the first ones, in 1816, so it's the oldest stud book for Arabian horses in Europe. Wow. We have around 80 people working uh, at the stud in different fields the office and lots of um, agricultural parts and riding and breeding and keeping. In total there are 500 horses that we are in charge of, but not all of them belong to the stud. We have around 250 young bulls and yearlings and two-year-olds that we raise for the breeders. So they can bring them and we will raise them until they are two or three and then they uh, take them back. Okay. This is the famous silver herd of Marbach. Oh yeah, look at them all. A silver herd with a chestnut spot. <laughs> <laughs> They are from three families, um, two Egyptians and one the old uh, dam line from the king. We breed them as riding horses because the Bedouins had them as riding horses. I think the horse, the horse is so central for mankind. We have been living together for around 6,000 years and, and the history of mankind would not have been the same without horses. So you have not only the agricultural animal, you have all the history, the culture, the paintings, the literature, the, the art of riding or driving and of breeding. That is um, something that is so interesting. Here are some young ones. Oh, <laughs> oh look at her. She's the bronze medal. Winner at the national championships. Congratulations. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Oh gosh, her face is just so kind. Yeah, she, she, she's a very kind lady. 
she's a real lady. So now we have an Egyptian Arabian that we imported from Egypt only two years ago. He's a, 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 a very good sire. I was able to ride him in the desert with the pyramids, not the big ones, but in Dashur. His name is Nasheed Al Amal, and he's from a very, very good breeder, Paras Kivas, and uh, goes back in his lines to the um, state stud in Egypt. And uh, we have some Egyptian horses from, from there in the 1950s, and so we needed some some more, I thought, and <laughs> now we we are we are very lucky with him. Oh, Silvery Moon. He's a thoroughbred. When he, he was announced as a starter in a, in a race, people would rush to the racetrack. You could always spot him, yes. but... <laughs> Even people that don't know about yeah, horses would yeah. be like, oh, I want to see that one. And many fans came here to, to visit him, and he's so sweet. He's a good horse for our trainees and young people. Oh, it's so a real cool. schoolmaster. This is a training carriage and uh, this is Fred Probst. He is the, the head of our driving stables and he's also very, very successful in sports, two pairs. And uh, he has a young lady. Uh, she's a trainee. She's learning about uh, driving at the moment. Wonderful. So please. All right. So we also train the young driving horses with the classical system. They are also ridden and then uh, they are well trained over the years for higher dressage and also obstacle driving. I love the precision work with these cones, you know, thinking about Especially with the team, you've got yeah. to really coordinate your horses. Yeah. Lovely canners, yeah. these guys. Yeah. It's a super team. Yeah. The right one is an old, experienced horse, and the left one is a young horse. Okay. So the older will train <laughs> the younger. It's time to see the horses. Hello, everyone. This is a Black Forest stallion. The Black Forest horse comes from the Black Forest, uh, as the name says, and it's an endangered breed. The breed is um, very, very old, and it's a small uh, draft horse, as you can see. There are much bigger draft horses, like Percheron or the Southern German Cold Blood. They are at least 10 or 20 centimeters higher and much uh, heavier. Um, but in the Black Forest, it's a deep, dark forest and you couldn't have these big horses. They needed these small but really uh, strong horses for working in the forest and also in agriculture sure. and for transportation. And they needed to be very easy to feed because the winters are very cold and long. Uh, so they, they were with the, in these beautiful black forest houses with the long roofs, you know, in wintertime. They were snowed in. Yeah. So, 
Uh, they were under one roof with uh, the families and the cows and everything, and they only had uh, a handful of hay or even um, leaves, dry leaves for the for the animals, and they uh, needed to cope with that. And in uh, spring, they had to be strong and work. <laughs> so these are very, very special horses. We love them a lot. They are really nice um, riding, driving horses. They are also used for therapy now and for um, yeah, leisure, uh, carriage driving. And uh, some uh, people are specialized on working with these still in the forests and also in agriculture, in, uh, in vineyards, for example, in very steep vineyards. So these are versatile horses. Multi-purpose. You and do his everything. his name is Weissenbach. Weissenbach. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you kind of have hair like I do too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just different color. You have more of the highlights going on. <laughs> they come mostly in this color, maybe with a little bit more white long hair and um, mane and tail. Oh, sure. And a little bit darker. That's the typical color. Uh, chestnut, liver chestnut, but we also have bay ones, black ones, and uh, a little number of uh, gray ones. Oh, cool! This is one of those really fun breeds that I have, I've heard about. They're like the fairy tale breed. So these guys have been one of the breeds I've been really excited to ride. Here in Baden-Württemberg we have around 700 mares and around 30 to 40 stallions, of which 25 are here in Marbach. So this is Umberto. Umberto is a heavy warm blood. It's, a, it's an old breed too. So it's, a, it's an endangered breed, a high, high on the red list, just on the top. Uh, we only have 50 mares left and um, two handfuls of stallions. And um, um, it's the old breed that was uh, developed by King William I. He needed a a versatile horse. They needed a good farm horse, but it should not be too heavy so the farmers could, uh, and also the court in, in Stuttgart, they could, you could use them as a carriage horse. So this breed was called Herr und Bauer, so uh, Sir and Farmer maybe, um, because um, in, the, on, in the weeks it was a farmer, mm -hmm. the horse, <laughs> and on the weekends or in, uh, at court they were representative horses. Oh, interesting! So, and they've developed this breed with, um, uh, with a different user group, so it was a very modern uh, way to, to develop this breed because he, the king, he put all the uh, people together, military people, representatives of the farmers, of the foresters, of transportation, and they discussed and discussed and then I said, okay, we need a horse like an artillery horse that could pull a cannon but also a plow and also a nice carriage in Stuttgart and then they were very, very successful. From around 
1880 um, until this, yeah, the end of the Second World War, even a little bit after. Um, this horse was very, very famous. And it's also a very versatile horse, similar to the Black Forest horse, but it's a warm blood, so a little bit more temperament and more going. And uh, he's also a breeding stallion. I always say this on the project, just going from one breed to the next, but literally in the span of a few minutes here, it's so interesting, the difference. You know, we've got similar heavy build, but already the seat feels different, the walk feels different, you yeah. know? It's, it's so cool how you really can see why each breed was developed into what they are today. You're very lucky, and what a good idea to have this project. Thank you! Good boy. Thank you, sir. They are very, very brave and uh, also calm, as you can see, and you can do anything with them. I love it. <laughs> so we try to keep this, this breed alive. <laughs> and the work you're doing, I feel like already has made it so they're here today. You know, that's yeah. what's so cool about yeah. it. Now, this breed was uh, their first. And um, after the Second World War, um, the tractors came and it was all uh, technique in agriculture, in transportation and so on. And uh, yeah, the horse was not in use anymore. And uh, the numbers of horses, they decreased, they crashed like nothing. But some breeders were still saying, we need to keep the horses. There were even campaigns, the horse should stay in the 1970s and that was when the Equitana was invented, 1972. Wolf Gruber, the founder of the Equitana, he said we need to show all the breeds and bring together all the breeds in one place. We cannot lose them, we need to, to keep on breeding. And uh, at that time sport developed, the, the equestrian sports, and um, breeds were refined for sports use and um, utilization. So the type that you had with the old Württemberg horse was refined with trakaners, with uh, also thoroughbreds and Arabian uh, blood, and also other breeds from northern Germany. And um, here you have a modern German dressage horse. Uh, this is Durello. He's a, he's a very, very good dressage stallion. He's a sire of a lot of very good dressage horses. So, try him. <laughs> he's quite tall, so <laughs> yes, a little larger. <laughs> We keep kind of downsizing the neck yeah. as, as we go. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Thank you.
He's one of those horses that you just feel like every little piece of something you want to do, you could do with him, you know? He's so sensitive and responsive. Here we are, three historic German breeds at a spectacular place for equestrians in southern Germany. Feeling the difference between each of the breeds has just been so interesting and I love to see all the different things that they're doing with their horses here. You're smiling from one ear to the other. This is just the best. <laughs> it has been so special to be here at Marbach and do some more quest rides. So a big thank you to everyone here that helped put this episode together. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button and please subscribe to the channel as it helps me continue to bring these breeds to you. Happy riding everyone. I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>